Hey everyone, Dr. B here with GrowGreenerGuru.com and today's video topic we're going to show you how to uh, use ladybugs. Um, we actually just had a video here not that long ago about uh, the difference between good and bad ladybugs and we had a few questions on how to, you know, where you can buy them, what they look like, the real ones, and um, how to use them. So basically um, <clears throat> these ladybugs are by Orcon, the company that makes them. They also make green lace wings and praying mantises as well or breeds them I should say um, but anyway uh, it's about it's, it's 1500 ladybugs roughly and they're about uh, I'd say ten dollars with my discount I end up walking out with them for about seven bucks so anyway um, I wanted to say uh, for you guys that are new to my channel or whatever um, I have worked at a grocery store before and that was one of our biggest things that we noticed when you ever seen somebody coming in with ladybugs or wanting to buy ladybugs, uh, you can almost tell right away that they're kind of amateur growers, and that they read on line somewhere that uh, you know ladybugs are the best thing that you can get for spider mites and whatever. Um, I think we've all been there. We've all probably heard that. Um, we probably went as far as bottom, and we're really disappointed with the results. So anyway, um, I was one of those persons, one of those people uh, when I first started growing. Uh, I think it was 2008. It was uh, the first legal crop, and uh, when I uh, I had a I bought a clone that had spider mites on it, and I didn't know much about it at the time. And then, uh, yeah, ladybugs were the first thing I tried, then neem oil, and then uh, basically all the other stuff. So uh, I just wanted to say that you know the grocery store carries stuff like this to you know get you to buy it, waste your money, and then come back and buy something that works. So anyway, uh, what I wanted to say though, really quick, that um, ladybugs are both good and bad. Uh, they do what they are intended for. They do eat um, spider mites. They actually eat up to 50 day. But there is quite a bit about ladybugs that they will not tell you at the grocery store. Not because they, you know, want to screw you over. I mean, maybe some of them want to screw you over, but um, you know, most people just don't know the life cycle and how ladybugs actually work. So uh, anyway, here is a plant. Uh, it does not have spider mites, but. Typically, uh, when you ever get, you know, if you ever have a spider mite infestation and you use ladybugs, uh, you would think that, you know, you just open the lid and simply just kind of start pouring on top and letting ladybugs do their work. Well, uh, and it kind of makes common sense, it sounds like common sense, but actually that's not what you're wanting to, you're not going to want to do. Um, what you're going to want to do is actually make a home for them. And they never tell you this, um, you know, most people just don't know. Um, but you know if you go ahead and if I did this and poured it on top or poured it all through my room in about three days these 1500 ladybugs will be about 15 or you know less than 100 uh, most of them will actually die off you know within the first day or first two days so um, you know just you're kind of uh, just throwing them away at that point just throwing them on top of your plant so what you're gonna want to do is make a little house for them so that way they can reproduce so what we got here is a little typical clone box and we're going to show you difference and uh, what you want and what you don't want. First of all, the lid um, is actually very important. You're going to want a lid that has three size holes and you're going to want to take the clips off that normally come in it. Um, here's a different lid. This is not one that you're going to want to use. I just wanted to show you guys really quick. It has a little screw things on the side. Um, I mean you can use these, I'm not saying that you can't. but you're probably gonna have better results with the open-faced ones because that way they can actually get out and stuff like that, which we'll go over here in a second. Anyway, uh, with the cloning, typical cloning tray, you're gonna have your, you know, your insert tray. Go ahead and just take that right out. You don't need that, you just need the bottom tray. And uh, so, anyway, this is gonna be their home. This is a little makeshift home. You can buy ladybug homes for probably 20, 30 bucks, but honestly, you could probably make them yourself for a lot cheaper. This is gonna cost me probably four bucks so um, anyway uh, so yeah we got the lids off you don't want those and now you're gonna need a water source and a food source so what you're gonna want is a sponge and the sponge the type of sponge is very important you're not gonna want to get a typical uh, dish rag uh, or uh, you know one that you wash your dishes with that has a scratch pad on the side usually those contain you know like they'll have a some soap on it you know in, in the beginning when they package it or whatever um, just get the regular you know just typical sponge that has nothing on it that's just a regular sponge you want 
nothing special to it. So anyway, um, water. So this is my RO water reverse osmosis. Um, I, I recommend using either reverse osmosis or even going out and buying a, you know a gallon of water for you know them personally. Um, I say this because you know there's obviously going to be more than one person watching this video, and, um, and and there's one thing you should know that everybody in the world has different water. I mean, city water, well water, whatever. Um, you know, everybody's PPMs are different, so. Like me, if I gave my ladybugs my regular faucet water, they probably would die within a few days. So, um, very rustic. You know, I'd probably have a hard time uh, using that water. So, um, you know, it's nothing to go buy a gallon of water um, just to use it for your ladybugs. And, uh, you know, 50 cents at Walmart or whatever. You know, it's going to be pure and whatever. So, anyway, uh, do not use dirty water. You, do not, you know, try to get the cleanest water possible. And, uh, and the sponge as well, so remember that is a sponge. So anyway, we got it kind of wet. Um, it's not actually as absorbent as I would like. Um, there's actually a different kind of sponge that I couldn't find, but you know, this is probably gonna do me, actually. This is pretty good, I decided to squeeze it a little bit. But uh, anyway, so go ahead and take your dome off. And you just simply put that right in the corner right there. And that's gonna be their water source. Now, what you're gonna want for a food source is something that's not acidic, meaning uh, you know, no oranges, uh, no kind of citrus fruit, fruits or anything like that. You're gonna want some kind of base food that you know it's not gonna really mess them up. So, raisins uh, are a great food source uh, if you look them up. Uh, this is just kind of what I found that a lot of people that like to raise ladybugs that's what they use. So, um, specifically, I you know, who knows, but. Anyway, pretty cheap. It's a uh, they're great value from Calif you know California reasons, but these are the cheap ones. You don't need anything special, you know, anything like that. But this is like three bucks, and this is gonna last a really long time. So it's just basically ladybug food at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably pour. I don't know. I would say probably 15, 20 of them pieces of raisins, and uh, just kind of keep an eye on them every few days just to see what they eat. But uh, anyway, so we got our food source established. Go ahead, just take your dome right back off. Actually, I probably should keep that off for a second. So go ahead, keep that off, and um, just right next to the water source, just kind of sprinkle a couple of raisins. You don't even really need to count. They'll find them. They'll be hungry and everything like that. So just kind of put them in the all in one spot. So we got our raisins. That's our food source. And now we're just gonna go ahead and put our ladybugs in here. Now, you can either do one of two things, but I recommend actually just keeping the lid, um, or keeping the bucket inside the dome itself. <clears throat> you could take them out and then kind of make a little bed for them if you want. And, um, you know, so, but, you know, in the bucket, it's kind of like a home farm already. So I'm gonna very gently, quickly try to do this. I'm holding the camera actually with my legs right now, so kind of bear with me. All right, guys, and sorry about that. Okay, so now we go ahead. There's actually two clips that you just rip off. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're packaged differently, but it goes right there and it kind of clips off, and then you just kind of go ahead and gently lift. And uh, be very careful, because right away, they're gonna be coming right out. They're ready, I mean, they're definitely ready to go. So, we're gonna wanna get our lid on right away because they're already starting to spread. So ladybugs like humidity. Um, that's why we have the humidity dome. It, uh, as you can see, they're already starting to eat, find their food and water and everything. Um, but yeah, they love humidity. That's what they need to reproduce. Um, that's actually, California had a drought this year because it was really dry. So uh, ladybugs were kind of hurt. But uh, anyway, as you can see, they're, they're woke right up. This is just a few minutes and they've already found their food source. Um, they did come from a refrigerator, and when they're in the refrigerator, they uh, will basically hibernate. They'll be very slow moving. You can keep them in the refrigerator for quite a while, a month or two, I believe. So before um, you use ladybugs, it's and very important you know how their lifestyle is. Um, they go through complete metamorphosis, which is four stages. Uh, usually incomplete metamorphosis is three stages. So they go through four stages in life. They start out as an egg, and then they uh, turn to a larval, or the larvae stage and then they go to the pupil or pupil stage or the pupae 
and then finally on to the adult stage. As you can tell, these are all adults. These are, and that's usually the only way that you can buy ladybugs is the adult stage. Um, and anyway, uh, ladybugs, they do eat. As you can tell, they're you know they're very hungry and eating. But uh, ladybugs tend to eat more when they are in the pupal stage or when they are in larval. Um, they're very very uh, you know vicious hunters when they're smaller. When they're bigger and more adult like this. They tend to want to just reproduce and just kind of eat and hang out. You know, I mean, they, they're not as uh, hunters as you know, as uh, the, the younger ones. As you can tell, there's only a couple here eating, and there's quite a few, you know, actually leaving the box, trying to get out. Um, there's actually one in my arm right now, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, where was I going with that? So yeah, um, yeah the. The uh, adult stages, they don't tend to eat as much. Um, so that's what they don't tell you at the girl store is actually when they, you know, when they lay eggs and then they have larval and they have, you know, the babies are actually what eat most of your spider mites. Uh, typically, a uh, ladybug can eat up to 50 uh, spider mites or aphids a day. Um, and most, most of the time it's, uh, you know, the younger ones that do that. It's, it's a hit or miss with the adults. Uh, like I said, they like to reproduce more than they like to eat. As you can tell, there's only a few eating and then the rest are just kind of hanging out. Again, another one on my arm. <laughs> They're trying to find me, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, uh, what you're going to want to do with the dome, you're not going to want to put it towards a uh, light source whatsoever. Um, you know, keep it as far away from the light, actually in the shade if you can. So anyway, we'll possible. be keeping you updated as things progress, as these ladybugs reproduce and get older. Um, and anyway, uh, yeah, so it's a very cheap investment. I recommend doing it this way rather than just dumping prey, you know, is what they call it, I guess. Um, but yeah, so anyway, the ladybugs do tend to find, I already have a bunch of them flying around my room, but um, another thing I want to tell you, uh, if you have yellow sticky traps, uh, like, you know, the fly ones used for flies, uh, try to take those out. Um, I'm gonna have to take mine out because I don't want my, you know, good ladybugs flying into those. So anyway, um, as far as residuals, you're not going to want to use uh, Mighty Wash, you're not going to want to use neem oil. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really, neem oil won't really kill uh, ladybugs, but it, it definitely makes them sick and they don't like it. So if you're going to be using ladybugs, just kind of, uh, you know, keep it easy on the residuals and, you know, kind of keep it as organic as possible. And that's, that's the whole point of using ladybugs anyway, is try to keep it organic. But anyway, um, pros and cons, really quick. Um, the biggest con of all is it is a ladybug, you know, it is a bug, and they do die, and, you know, they don't really choose where they want to die at sometimes. So a lot of the times they, uh, you know, in your flower room, you might uh, open up a bud, you know, after, after it's already done, cured, dried, and everything, you'll go to open up a bud and you'll find a dead ladybug inside of it. Um, definitely has happened before. Um, when I when I did this, you know, my first harvest, um, I had three different people call me back and said I found, you know, a shell of a ladybug in my bag or whatever. And uh, so, you know, and that's the thing too, I'll, I'll grow around it too, you know, like. Say if you had a, a ladybug die on a plant that's in week three of flower, you know, and it dies underneath of a bud, um, that bud will grow, grow right around that carcass, it won't, you know, so if it's sticky enough, then, you know, the pistols kind of keep the ladybug there, they will uh, grow right around it. So that's one kind of uh, bad thing. Another thing, obviously, is, uh, you know, they, just like any other creature, they shit and poop everywhere. It's not a big deal, but if you're working and trying to produce medicine and you're trying to keep it as safe and healthy as possible, yeah, obviously, you know, ladybug poop probably won't hurt you any, but it's definitely something, you know, that's not normally found there. So you're not going to want to, you know, use it at all costs. But um, anyway, uh, I recommend using ladybugs, you know, maybe just in veg. I don't, <clears throat> I don't recommend using them in the flower room at all. Um, that's what Mighty Wash kind of is for, you know, Mighty Wash is good for veg plants too, but, um, you know, I, I don't have a, uh, you know, a spider mite problem or anything, I don't have any spider mites, but, um, 
you know, this is just kind of an experiment and to show you guys how to do it. Um, I actually kind of regret, I'm almost regretting right now. Uh, they're kind of coming out in numbers, that's for sure. So maybe you guys can, uh, you know, use the, the lids. But, you know, there's still quite a few of them in there, but, you know, they're uh, definitely all over my room already. So, but as you can tell, there's some smart ones in there. They'll reproduce. They're just going to have some larval in there. And, uh, yeah, just make sure that your sponge is kind of wet at all times. Make sure that they have food at all times. Uh, and they're bed. I can try so. to do this as best as I can, but this little guy is moving. Uh, like I said in my last video, how the difference in ladybugs, as you can tell that their head is different than their body. It's, like, not attached as opposed to the Asian ladybugs or Japanese ladybugs or lady beetles, ladybirds their heads are connected and it's more of a circular so these are more like a beetle type they have a uh, you know their head is separated another way to an easy way but probably not a way you're gonna want to do it um, these do not bite at all they'll never bite you as far as I know I've never had one bite me uh, Japanese ladybugs will though so if you have one and it pinches you you know it's not a real ladybug right off the bat so anyway so, um, I hope this video helped you guys out and as always uh, stay tuned for more. Keep it green. Stay true to each other. Take it easy, guys. Peace out.